Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at a light meter from Urseri. Now, I know many of you are probably asking, what is a light meter and why do I need one? Well, I'll explain that in a moment, don't get ahead of me. So a light meter has many different applications, which I will explain as we go along. But the most common one, which I'm sure most of you are probably familiar with, is photography and videography. Now I got this light meter for use in improving the lighting for my videos and for testing purposes. As you probably already know, I test a lot of lights on my channel and the only information I have to go on is the manu what the manufacturer states on their webpage or on their packaging. Sometimes they don't even say how strong a light output really is and sometimes the amount they say doesn't match up with the visual output. So now I will be able to test and cross-reference this information to see just how accurate the light's output really is from each manufacturer. So let's open up this puppy and see what we get. But before we do that, if you enjoy watching honest tool and product reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time I produce a new product or tool review video. All right, so let's see what we have here. Now this is an Amazon purchase, and instead of coming in a plain, ordinary box, it has a rather attractive box to it. And the link is in the description below. So let's see what we get inside. So we open it up, and as you can see, you get the light meter, and the sensor, and the battery. Let's take this out of here. You also get a warranty card, the owner's manual, and a convenient carrying pouch. That's fairly convenient right there. Let's put this aside. So you get the meter. You can see that's the meter right there. You get a battery, which I'll install in a moment. And this is the light sensor, which is a separate removable detachable light sensor. And what you and the, the light sensor is under here. You take off the cover, and there is your sensor right there but normally you keep it covered. And let's see, to attach it, all you do is you hook it up here on the front, on the top part there, and it has an arrow indicating where you lined it up and an arrow on here as well. Just line up the two, push it in, and you're good to go. Now let me put in the battery and we'll look a little further. Okay, so I popped in the battery, it takes a nine volt battery as you saw, pop it in the back, I'm sure you guys know how to do that. So you get the meter, the sensor, the battery, the pouch, this retails for $30 on Amazon, and it comes with a 12-month warranty. And the independent sensor over here stretches out up to 2.5 meters, or 8 feet. So it has a, a good stretchy, you know, connector on it. It has a large LCD display with a backlight on it, and it has a simple button right there where you press it, and you hold it, and it lights up. You can see how it lights up. That's convenient if you're in dark situations where you can't see very well. It has a high accuracy of plus or minus 4% and a response rate of 2 times per second. The uh, sensor itself has a, it's a nice plastic body with a nice rubber overmold or rubber insert, whatever you want to call it, on the sides there. So it's convenient for you to hold it, doesn't slip out of your hand, etc. And it's shaped in a nice manner so you can grip it properly. You're not going to be holding it very tight, but at least it's comfortable in the hand. And this is a nice rubbery type of cover to keep your lens, your sensor protected. And on the back, you have a screw insert for a tripod, because sometimes you may not want to hold it. You may want to put it on a tripod or something and have it further away from you. That's the convenience of this sensor, where some sensors, the, the where some units, the sensor is built into the top of it. They're one unit like that. This one is separate, so you can extend it out as far as you want to and have the measurement unit separate from the sensor itself, the meter separate from the sensor. So that could be convenient under certain circumstances. And it has a four level measuring range and it measures in FC or foot candles and lux. It has a minimum maximum uh, reading and uh, it also has an analog graph, which, let's see, basically I think I have to open this up to be able to show you how the graph looks. And you can see right there, the graph is on the top part, and it's an analog graph, which rotates across depending on the light source that you're looking at. Like I said, you can adjust on the buttons down here whether you want to read in foot candles or lux. And if you don't know, 
Foot candles is more of an imperial measurement where lux is more of a metric measurement. So it depends, you know, what you're most comfortable with. And all of this can be converted easily to lumens or any other kind of unit that you want. These are the two most common ones and lumens is also another one as well. Now the range on this is from zero to 400,000 lux or from zero to 40,000 FC or foot candles. It has a spectral range, CEI, for topic human eye response, which means that the sensor right here is rounded or curved to respond to light just like the human eye would do. And it has an operating temperature of minus 20 degrees to 60 degrees centigrade or minus 4 degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It has an auto shut off, which basically if you leave it on like I'm doing right now, after 15 minutes it'll turn itself off to conserve the battery. And this can be used for photography, set design, lighting, videography, research, home lighting, indoor farming, and much, much more. And this is something that, believe it or not, a lot of home decorators use when they're setting up the lighting in the home. Of course, you can obviously do your own lighting and not pay someone, but when you pay someone to do something like that or set up some proper mood lighting or specific lighting for a specific room, they will bring a meter like this and be able to adjust and accommodate the lighting to whatever works best in that room. So as you can see right there, I'm just uh, showing you how the meter looks and how the meter works with the uh, sensor over here open and exposed to just the ambient lighting that I have right here in this room uh, on top of my bench. And you can see how it fluctuates and moves. And let me turn on the backlight. It turns off after a little while. And you can see how it moves right there. And right now, I have it set to Lux, but it can be switched to foot candles. Let me see where you set the unit. And really quickly, you switch over to foot candles and you can see exactly what kind of lighting you're getting. And the graph on top gives you a visual representation of how much lighting you're putting out. All right, so let me give you an example of uh, how uh, light testing would work with a unit like this. What you do is, you take the sensor and you put it on a little tripod like I show you right here. Then you put the light about a foot or two away from it. Um, you, you want to have consistent distancing when you're doing testing. Then you turn on the meter, put it to whatever you want to look at. Let me turn on the backlight for you. And there you go. It tells you approximately how many lux this is putting out. Then you convert this over to lumens. And lux and lumens are fairly close, so it looks like this light is putting out about 2,000 lumens approximately. So that gives you an idea of what this light puts out under the high setting. Like I said, it's an approximation. I can do a calculation to find out exactly what it is, but for showing you guys right now, look at that, 2,100 about there, which I think is what this light is rated for, about 2,100 lumens. And here we have the Harbor Freight stick light, which you can you know put in front of it like I'm doing right now and test to see how much lighting it puts out. And you can see right here, it's putting out 102 foot candles, or you can just change the unit right here. And there you go, 103. Well, let me turn on the backlighting once again. It turns off rather quickly. Turn off the change the unit, and it puts out about 1100 lux. So then you can just uh, go online and use a simple calculator and figure out how much it's putting out. You can tell it's putting out a lot less than the other light was putting out. And then with this, you can also change different levels. You can see up at the top there, turn on the backlight. Up at the top, you can see how the level changes and that tells you you're out of range. 4,000, 40,000, 400,000, depends on the range you need to be at. And it also has a minimum maximum, which tells you it's been at 11.5 thousand or zero, obviously. So there you go. Okay guys, so there you have it, a review of the Useri light meter. So if you're a photographer, videographer, YouTuber, or you're uh, working in the industry of testing lighting and stuff like that, interior decorator, anything along those lines, you should consider looking at this unit and see if it can be beneficial to you. It's very flexible, very convenient, easy to work with, only 30 bucks on Amazon, that's really, really cheap, has a good spectral range compared to some of the other units. I consider it to be a fairly good unit. I'm pretty happy with the purchase so anyway hope you enjoyed the video if you did give me a thumbs up be sure to hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next one
Bye-bye for now.